Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Happy Thanksgiving to those of you in the United States. I'm recording this on Thanksgiving. It won't come out until Friday the next day. But anyway, I wanted you all to know that I was thinking of you. As it turns out, I'm in Playa del Carmen in Mexico, so I'm just enjoying a regular Thursday here, but it is really nice to be on vacation. But over the past couple of days, I've seen an exchange between James Dalma and some other folks about AI distillation and quantization. And it seems like there's some confusion about why those topics are so important, why Tesla would be hiring engineers to do that, and what exactly they are. So let's take Take a look. So I want to explain what distillation is in general, but also talk about it in terms of Tesla's full self-driving in terms of their AI4 and their older AI3 hardware as well. So first let's talk about AI distillation engineers. So as you can see, Tesla Yoda said that Tesla is hiring AI engineers to do reinforcement learning and distillation. And this brought up some questions and James Dalma helped to answer that. And I'm going to try to perhaps explain it more. I don't know, at least I will explicate what he said and we will hopefully get to the bottom of all this. So you can see James Stevenson and replied to this post by saying, does this mean hardware three full self-driving James Dalma? And I would personally say that the answer is yes, but, and that's basically what James said as well. So he said, yes, but not only hardware three, the train model is probably too large for any of the vehicles. It would be distilled down to fit in hardware four and then separately distilled down to even smaller hardware three. And the high percentage likelihood here is that that's what they're already doing. They're already doing a lot of distillation work and they're just hiring more people. This is not something brand new with Tesla. This is something that's been ongoing and they need more engineers to do this particular type of task. And then James quote posted himself and said, distillation is making a teacher model which is extremely smart but so big it only runs on a data center. Use that teacher to train very smart quote students that are small enough to run in a car. Car sides models are smarter if they distill from a larger model. So this is where we can start to break things down. If you want to compare this to like large language models you can think of a really big large language model like Grok 4.1 or ChatGPT 5 or Gemini 3. We're talking on the order of 1 trillion parameters. In other words 1 trillion little knobs that can be tuned to create a model that is super smart that can answer your questions and knows an awful lot of stuff, right? So that is a really, really big model. Now, obviously Tesla is doing things that are much more aligned with diffusion modeling and stuff like that, but I'm gonna use this as just a way of explaining things. So the deal here is that you've got this super, super smart model, but it's a trillion parameters. It needs to live not even just on a single data cluster rack, but on basically a whole data cluster, right? It needs to live on a whole bunch of GPUs, potentially hundreds hundreds of GPUs with gigabytes and gigabytes of VRAM and all sorts of storage and all of that kind of stuff. This is not something you can run on a portable device like your iPhone or something. And so while this is really, really useful and incredibly smart, it's not particularly great if what you're looking for is something that can run on your laptop like I'm recording this on or your iPhone or potentially, of course, your Tesla as well. It's not good for doing local inference. And of course, it's incredibly energy intensive. It's very slow. It requires hundreds of these GPUs, potentially thousands, to be running simultaneously to get the answer that you're looking for. So while this original really big model is definitely the best way to get the smartest model, it is absolutely not the best way to get one that can actually run in an envelope, power envelope, compute envelope, memory envelope, bandwidth envelope, all of that kind of stuff. It just can't run in anything that's reasonable size for us normal human beings, especially something like a car, which only has a mobile processor in it. So what to do, you basically think of this like a teacher in a school. Let's say you have a teacher that's got like three PhDs, like they're super, super smart, right? They've spent decades training themselves. They know an awful lot of information. Well, that is fantastic, but that person required, you know, decades to train and there's only a very few of them. And so they're a scarce, limited resource. But what that person can do is teach a whole bunch of like, quote, dumber, not as smart students, the ones that maybe don't have as big of an IQ or something, or maybe you could say that they're like 15 year old high school students or something, right? Right? So I'm not trying to denigrate these students here. I'm just basically saying you've got a person who's like super, super smart, very, very rare individual, has a lot of knowledge. That person can then train a whole bunch of less smart, but still very, very smart individual students to go out and do specific types of tasks. So let's say this person has like a PhD in psychology, a PhD in chemical engineering, and a PhD in world history or something, right? So that means that person could go out and teach students to be amazing at chemical engineering, at psychology, and world history. I think those were the three I said. It doesn't really matter which one is which, but the important part here is that if you've got that one really, really smart teacher, it can teach students in a bunch of different areas. And of course, these large language models with a trillion parameters are like the equivalent of like a hundred different
different PhDs, right? So they know a whole bunch of stuff, but they're way too power inefficient. They require too much space, too much resources, all of that kind of stuff to run efficiently in smaller environments and to run with low latency, all of that kind of stuff. But the student models that are not as smart, so instead of like a trillion parameters, maybe it's 10 or 20 billion parameters. Those student versions are good enough to do a good job in those individual areas that the teacher can teach them. And the distillation process, there's different ways of doing it, but one potential is that the teacher model could come up with questions, just like a teacher would come up with test questions or review questions or something like that. It could then ask the students those questions and then grade those students. Or you could potentially have the teacher kind of split into two, where you have one teacher model that's coming up with different things to ask the students. So it's saying like, you know, what about this question for chemical engineering? What about this question? What about this question? And then during training, the student answers those questions. And then another model could come in and say, how good of a job did they do at this? And so you could actually have multiple different teacher models and multiple student models working in tandem with each other. And that could work as well. But whatever the situation, you've got a very, very smart, but very, very resource intensive teacher model that let's say knows 99.9% .9 of a topic. It's really, really good. And a student model could never get quite that good, but the teacher model could get it up to say 95, 96, 97% of that knowledge in a much, much smaller package, like a couple of orders of magnitude smaller model. And that means that that model could run in a portable device like a laptop, a phone, your car, or whatever. And it can run in much, much faster than the other one can because it doesn't have nearly as many parameters it has to calculate through. So that's the basic idea of distillation here is you're taking a really smart but really big model and you're teaching a smaller model enough. It's not going to be ever as good as the original model, but it can be close enough that it's really, really good. And then attached to that is the idea of quantization. And you can see James sort of replied to himself and James Stevenson about this topic. But one of the things you can do with the teacher models, you can have a very, very deep numerical system. So remember I said like a trillion parameters. Each one of those parameters is a knob that you can tune. And that knob can have many, many decimal points like 3.1415927, right? It can have all of these numbers of pi or something. So it can have 20, 30, 40 decimal places if you want to have that so that it has a lot of depth of knowledge. But that, as it turns out, is not particularly necessary for the student model. It's especially not necessary for full self-driving. And Elon Musk has recently mentioned, and I've got a video about it up here if you're interested, he mentioned the fact that Tesla uses integer math instead of even floating point at all, which means one, two, three, four, five, right? It's binary integers, but basically the equivalent of decimal integers. It's only using those whole numbers rather rather than 3.1415927, right? It's, it's only using just the whole number at the beginning because as it turns out, it's close enough to make that work. And what that means is that each of the parameters, if you have 10 billion parameters, but each of those parameters is only an integer as opposed to a floating point number, each of those parameters is much, much smaller. It doesn't require nearly as much space to store. It can be calculated much, much faster. Integer multiplication and addition is super, super fast. So you have a huge advantage with that. And so you can see, James responding, we quantize neural networks, which is the idea of reducing the resolution of these numbers. And again, integers is about as low as you can go. You could say we're only quantizing it to the hundreds digit. So you get 3.14, which obviously is two orders of magnitude better than three. But if you don't need that dot one four, then why use it at all? Just use the three. And so what James has said is we quantize neural networks because knowing 27 things to one decimal place. In other words, if you have 27 spots of memory available, 27 available computations slots or something like that. So both memory and computation speed, if you have 27 of those, why use that for one number when you can use it for 27 different numbers? So he's saying knowing 27 things to one decimal place is more useful than knowing one thing to 27 decimal places in this particular instance. Now, of course, there are other mathematical situations where it's very, very important to know a single thing to very, very high decimal precision. But as it turns out in the case of neural networks, it really doesn't. And so if you combine these two things, if you combine quantizing neural networks, making them much lower resolution, and the fact that you use a much, much smaller model, the student model might be 10 or 50 billion parameters as opposed to 1 trillion parameters that allows you to run the model on much, much smaller memory bandwidth because each number might be only 1 16th or 1 32nd, the size of the original number that the teacher model trained on. And of course the teacher model that means has more knowledge. There is more knowledge in all of those decimal places that extend out, but how necessary is that? Turns out it's not particularly necessary unless you want that last tiny little degree of knowledge. You can train something with a lot fewer parameters and a lot lower resolution 
resolution. And that turns out to be a fantastic deal. Now, the way that Tesla works is that they're actually doing more like diffusion models, which means you're starting with pixels coming in from the universe and it's then segmenting out that that universe into objects like cars and streets and pedestrians and street signs and traffic lights and on and on and on. It does that kind of work and then it reasons about it and says what's going on right now, what just happened a second ago, what's going to happen likely in the near future, so what do I do? It makes predictions based on that. And so as James is saying, and I completely agree, they have a teacher model, they probably have a very, very smart model that has a great deal of knowledge about driving and it's maybe perfect in 99.99999% of these situations. So it's got a lot of nines, it's really, really good, but it runs on 10,000 GPUs, requires a petabyte of memory, right? I'm just throwing out numbers, but probably it's not quite that much, but it requires a huge amount of resources to run, which means you can't go stick it in somebody's car because unlike something like Grok or ChatGPT, you can't ask a question, it goes out to the internet, does its thing in the data center and then comes back. That's way too much latency. You need it to happen basically instantaneously, which means it needs to be running locally on the device, which means it has a very limited amount of memory to hold these parameters. It's got a very very small amount of energy to run and it's got a very limited amount of compute. So you have to teach these student models. So if the teacher model is like 99.99999 and it's only like 00001 where it actually fails or has a problem, if the student model is even three orders of magnitude worse than that, it still makes it 99.99% useful. It means that that model, even though it's distilled and it's not as smart as the teacher model, is still really, really good. And that's what Tesla is banking on. And so that's what Tesla is doing with their distillation engineers is they're taking that teacher model, they're teaching the other model, which as it turns out is way better than just training the other model. If you just gave the other model all of this raw data, it wouldn't be smart enough on its own to learn how to deal with that data, to take it in and to act on it like the teacher model does. But if you use the teacher model to teach it, then it is smart enough to learn from the teacher. And that's the part that's really, really cool. Not something that would have necessarily been known ahead of time, but it turns out that it works really, really well. And it's basically a fantastic hack that makes things work amazingly well and allows Tesla's full self-driving to be as amazing as it is. Alrighty folks, so that's all about quantization and distillation. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. If you have other questions you'd like me to explain, definitely let me know that as well. While you're down there, if you don't mind liking the video, it really helps out with YouTube's neural network algorithm for other people to find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.